All right, well, welcome back, everybody. Hopefully, you can hear me with all this wind. So, this is going to be one of my favorite episodes to make right here. I want to thank y'all so much for all the channel support and watching, especially these firewood videos, because it has actually motivated me, and believe it or not, my wife, to give me the nod to go ahead and get my dream chainsaw. So, that's what this episode's about. We'll do a little bit of talking in the beginning, because y'all are going to have a lot of questions as to why I chose the model that I did. And then we're going to break this saw in on this gigantic piece of oak back here uh, that I cut down last year. I couldn't manage it with my old saw, just way too big. This saw is going to be able to handle it. So I figure it's a good piece of wood to break it in on. So without further ado, let me show you what I got. We'll explain why, and then we'll jump into doing some cutting. So y'all know I am a die-hard steel fan. Uh, my 260 Pro is 15 or 17 years old. I can't quite remember. It's been a bulletproof saw other than uh, the carburetor finally giving me some problems because it's all that old. The thing's just deteriorated in the carburetor. So that was just, just a wearable part in time for it to be you know, rebuilt. I've got a 170 that's been bulletproof. Like I said, my 260 has pretty well been bulletproof. I am brand loyal so i knew a steel is where i wanted to go and i wanted to go there for several other reasons too because i did look at other saws and we'll talk about that so here it is this is my absolute dream chainsaw it's a steel ms 462 cm it's the mtronic version i have read nothing but amazing things about this saw i'm pretty sure i've watched every youtube video possible on it and uh kind of know it inside and out before i've even got it I had them put a 25 inch bar on it and I'll explain why I've got what I've got right here. All right, so we'll go ahead and talk a few minutes. That may be boring to some of y'all that just want to see the saw run. I'll try to remember to put the time down right here to where you can skip ahead in the video and watch the cutting. If that's all that you're interested in. But I have enough viewers that I chat with every day that's going to have some questions on why this model, why not another model, why the bar, etc. So we'll go ahead and explain that. Let's go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room. If you look all over YouTube, without a doubt, the most popular chainsaw probably on the planet right now is the Steel MS500i, the fuel injected model. It's a model that pretty much competes with this one right here. And you're probably wondering, if you're already spending this much on a saw, why did you not go with that model? Lots of reasons. We'll just go ahead and jump in them because, again, I know that's going to be the most common question. So have y'all ever had like a dream car or something that you've been thinking about? Maybe it's like an old model Mustang or uh, you know a two or three or five year old model Corvette or whatever it may be. That's kind of how this saw has been for me. I've been watching it the last two to three years, dreaming about it, fell in love with it. So it just had a spot in my heart. And if y'all watched the channel long enough, you've heard me talk about this. I have commented on countless other firewood channels. You know, this is my dream saw. Can't wait to get it one day. And uh, something happened recently that finally said we could have it. I won't get into politics or anything else, but let's just say, since this stimulus come out, it was kind of like a ding, ding, ding moment. Huh. It just so happens that looks like it would exactly cover the chainsaw between mine and my wife's stimulus. I don't necessarily agree with the stimulus. I think this country is digging itself in a bunch of debt that our children's children's children is going to have to pay back in their lifetimes. But we won't get into that. We don't talk politics on the channel. We talk firewood. So needless to say, we actually wound up getting stimulated. It was meant to stimulate the economy. So I went to a local steel dealer and uh, picked this up. And thank y'all so much for all the support on the firewood videos. By far the most popular videos on my channel here lately are firewood videos. They get thousands more views than anything else that I do. Tiffany seen that, looked at the other day, knew I've been wanting this chainsaw, and she was like, you know what, maybe you should go ahead and get that saw since your firewood videos are so popular. So thank y'all for watching and sharing them. That's the reason I have this thing right now. Plus, she freaked whenever I told her this saw was $500. No, not really. <laughs> I told her exactly what it cost, and uh, she liked to throw up. But uh, it just so happens, like I said, the stimulus almost exactly covered it. So, you know, things were meant to be, apparently. So back to the 500i. Why did I not go with that model? Multiple reasons. Again, this one's been, in, you know, just kind of on my mind for the last couple years. And I said one day if I could ever afford it, I'm getting it. So I didn't care about the 500i. This is the saw I wanted. I've, trust me, I've compared the specs on everything from the Husqvarna's to the 500i to this, and now we'll talk more in depth on why I chose this over the 500i. So we're 
So probably the next reason. I'm a small stature person, and there's one thing I learned over 20 plus years of running chainsaw. Weight is everything. This thing is almost a pound lighter than the 500i, a little less than that. Doesn't sound like much, means a heck of a lot to me. So weight was absolutely key. Another reason I chose that, price. Now surprisingly, the 500i, they had one at my dealer and I looked at it. It was only about 220 more dollars than this one, which is a lot of money, don't get me wrong. But when you're already talking, spending this kind of money on chainsaw, what's another 200 something dollars? Probably one of the biggest reasons I didn't go with the 500i, I am not the latest and greatest type of person. Uh, actually, I've always been the exact opposite of that. I don't believe in buying first year model trucks, uh, chainsaws, anything like that. I wanna give time for the bugs to get worked out. I know a lot of you are probably saying, hang on, 500i is not first year. It might be kind of in its first year in the States, but I know they've been running it over in Europe. But talking with the local dealers and all, other than this big dealer I went to, he said he sold several and not a single one's come back. That's great news, still makes great products, but not many dealers or people still have got their hands on a lot of them and have really put time on them, like some of the 462s. So again, I wanna make sure bugs are worked out on something so new, a different type of technology with the fuel injection. Although it's looking like the 500i is absolutely a winner. So price, weight was absolutely critical. Uh, I'm not the latest and greatest type person. Mtronic's been out for several years now. From what my dealer said, they're absolutely bulletproof. They had some solenoid issues years ago when they first come out. That's all been resolved with the different generations. And uh, he said these are just amazing saws. So there's a few of the reasons why right there. You know, um, so that, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, another reason is something I did not personally like about the 500i and I loved on the 462. Let me show you. This was kind of a big selling point to me. I'll take the cover off and show you what I'm talking about. The filtration system. I am not a fan of the 500i. It's got a, uh, you know, kind of a weird looking air filter that sits down on top. And I can't remember if it's either got a flip top or actually old screw on top kind of kind of looks like a step backwards personally and i've actually watched some videos on youtube where dust was getting underneath the filter on the inside uh, i'm kind of wondering if that's a design that's going to have to really be worked on by steel now they purposely run this all hard and let the filter kind of cake up so it's probably trying to suck from anywhere that it could but i don't like that and i've kind of read a few other people talking about not really preferring the 500 eyes filtration system I love these new spin-on type filters. I've still got older steel saws that have the old kind of flat filter. Not crazy about them. This I absolutely love. It literally just spins and locks on. Just old simple paper filter, but it has a very nice gasketed seal that fits around. I really think this one is gonna allow a lot less trash and debris into the saw. The other thing that I like, there's a pretty good aftermarket market support already for these. There's some nice uh, oilable filters that I'm thinking about getting, and there's a few other mods that I'm probably gonna get down the road for this that should make it an amazingly powerful, yet still lightweight saw. All right, another reason I chose this over the 500i, and this is gonna be a bit controversial right here. Again, I have watched every YouTube video I could find, including a bunch of them in Europe that I didn't even understand the language, didn't care, I wanted to watch saw run. And there is a pile, and I mean a pile, of 462 versus 500i videos on YouTube. Watch them. And I'll tell you, it's about 50-50. If you watch a lot of them, they run the same bar, same chain, cut the same piece of wood. A lot of those videos, believe it or not, this cut faster than the 500i. But then there's a lot of those videos, the 500i cut slightly faster than this. Regardless, they were all fractions of seconds, almost identical times. It, it seems to be a wash on time. This really seems to be a pretty powerful saw, even though it's slightly less horsepower than the 500i. So when I got to looking at that, I, I just didn't see a huge advantage to jump up to a 500i, spend the extra money, get a filtration system I didn't like, and everything else I described. So I just, I just didn't see a reason why. This looked to be just about as powerful. Obviously the specs say the 500i is a little more powerful. So that's kind of another reason it's like, you know, it's like why jump up to that? Why get away from a saw that you know, I just really desire to go to the latest and greatest one. I personally didn't see a big increase in anything except that 500i looks like it has amazing acceleration. 
However, this M-Tronic is supposed to be pretty sweet too, but I don't think nothing will probably beat fuel injection as far as acceleration goes. So it looks like a really peppy saw, no doubt about that. I think they're both amazing saws, not knocking a 500i. I'd be happy to have one, but that's my reasons why I have this because I know you are gonna question me why. Now, as far as the bar goes, it come with the 20 inch bars, what he just had on it on the shelf. I upgraded to a 25 because there is some big wood I'm gonna be cutting. There's some big wood that I'm gonna be getting from the tree service company. Now that I'm starting to get into firewood more, I thought a 25 bar would be perfect for this saw. Now, the bad thing about these new lightweight power head saws, including the 500i, they can be front heavy with a longer bar than a 20 inch. This one's a little front heavy, but it actually balances pretty well. So when I hold it right here, you can see it's only slightly front heavy with a 25 inch bar. And I actually kind of prefer to be slightly front heavy with a bucking saw, and that's majority of what this is gonna be used for. Now I went in purposely gonna get a 25 inch ES or a 25 inch light bar. He did not have any light bars in stock. So I went with the standard Rollomatic ES. We'll see. If this all feels like it gets too heavy, I may still get a light bar down the road. I may even get a 20 inch bar to make this an amazingly fast bucking saw, but I think 25 is gonna cover some big trees that I have to fail on the property, as well as buck up any big firewood that I have. So I, I don't know, we'll see. I may even buy a 28 or 30 inch down the road since this looks like it'll pull it because I've got some other plan. So let's fire this up. The dealer said to try to let it idle for a minimum of 60 to 90 seconds because these new lightweight saws have lightweight pistons in them that heat up quicker than the cylinder and uh, don't go really running into it hard right off the bat until everything warms up so it expands correctly. Sounds good to me, so we're gonna let it idle for quite a bit. Other thing he also said until we get several tanks of gas through it and truly broke in, don't be revving it out of the wood. He said, put it in the wood Go ahead and run it like your normal chainsaw, but make sure for sure that you don't rev high out of the wood. That makes sense, and I've heard a lot of people talk about running six, 10, maybe even 15 tanks of gas through. So let's fire this thing up. <clears throat> All right, if y'all are not familiar with these new steels, I'm learning this is my newest steel that I have. Even my 170 is relatively new, but it doesn't have this new, new style right here. So it doesn't have the push all the way down to choke and then come back up, um, multiple position switches. It's pretty much got down, middle, and off. Off is up, kind of like you've always seen. So you just squeeze the trigger, put that all the way down. Basically, that's your choke. And I was told, crank this up, let it idle for you know five, six seconds, kind of riching it up before you tap the trigger, and then it's in normal mode. The carb starts adjusting itself. So something new, but I'm kind of excited about it. Heard really good things about the Mtronic saws. It's got compression release. I have already crunk it with and without it. Surprisingly, this saw cranks really, really easy. So let's see, it's cold as of right now.
This is the only thing I like these new safety cans for. Chainsaws. You can push, cut the gas off. Other than that, I hate them. So I turned the oiler all the way up and I'm surprised to see it used the majority of tank of oil for tank of gas. I keep reading that the oilers on these are extremely stingy and there is a pin that you can knock down to turn the oiler up even more past factory max. However, man, it used a lot of oil, which is good because I want to protect these expensive chains. All right, so thoughts thus far, man, it's a powerful saw. I'll admit I'm kind of babying it even causing it to bog a little. I need to stop that. I keep thinking, man, it's a new saw. I don't want to get into it, but the dealer even told me, don't rev it out of the wood to max, but when you put it in the wood, hammer down on it. I need to do that. Yes, I am cutting dry 40 to 50 inch oak. Probably the worst thing I could be out here cutting. It's gonna be hard on the saw, hard on the chain, but hey, it should heat it up and break it in. This thing is going to absolutely rip in green wood. So don't be so quick to judge it just yet. It's one year old dried oak. Not, not easy stuff to cut at all, but it is ripping right through it. Very, very impressed with us thus far. Got one piece that was so big there, I think it was like 54 plus inches. And I didn't want to cut all the way down to the dirt. I'm trying to split it right now. Almost got it to pop, but I think I'm gonna have to get the tractor to bust it the rest of the way. My first cut, I got way off. That's something I'm gonna have to get used to with a long bar. I'm not used to, you know, being off that much here, how it'll uh, throw the whole cut off going all the way through the piece of wood. So I'm about to trim that piece up. I think I'm gonna grab the tractor, try to pop the rest, and we'll do some noodling and get all this stuff down there to where we can get it split another day.
It is trying to rain on me and the radar does not look good. We got another cool front coming through and uh, I've got just a short bit of time to talk. So as far as the saw goes, man, is it powerful. It is, it is very powerful. It's doing a little popping every now and then. I think I might be hitting the other upper rev limiter or the saw is still tuning itself. I have been told and read quite a bit, uh, got sawdust in my eye, uh, that online that these take 610 plus tanks to kind of really tune themselves break in and start really running strong people act like they can see a big difference it's already a powerful saw for me so if it's only going to get just a little bit stronger that is excellent so i guess i'll give the, the saw time to uh you know to tune itself and work in that's what mtronic does and i can tell one thing I'm kind of getting gunked up on the bottom of my bar it's looking a little hot the chain's looking a little hot i'm not happy with the amount of oil that this is outputting I ran steel oil in it first, and then this bulk oil that I buy here, they're both pulling the tank down about the same. I already kind of knew that going in. There is a little pin on the bottom side where you adjust the oiler that you can knock down, and you can go past factory max settings. A lot of people on YouTube doing that, especially once you kind of get it to the 25 to 28 inch bar range. They're saying it's just not oiling well enough. So I think I'm going to knock that little pin down, turn the oiler up. Other than that, there's not much else I'm going to do to this saw. I'm just going to keep running tank after tank through it. I've already three tanks in now. Let it keep tuning itself. Let it wear and break in. And uh, I hope I have a long lasting, excellent saw. One thing I'm gonna check real quick, really dusty wind blowing all back in the saw, pulling dust in it. I'm covered. I'm gonna see how the air filter looks after three tanks. Uh, I see a lot of other saws people saying every tank to two tanks, they're having to knock the filter out. It seems like a lot. Maybe that's the case today because it's been really dusty in some of this old dry stuff. Some of it was green, dead in the center. A lot of the outside stuff was very dry, powdery, hard on the saw to cut, no doubt. No dust on the inside, just what I expect with this. I want it to seal very well. A little bit of buildup on the inside, not bad at all. I can go very easily blow this out. Nothing on the inside though, really good. 
I don't see why I'd even have to clean this out just yet. And supposedly the saw adjusts itself for air filter conditions too. All right, so final impressions and words before this rain gets me that I see coming. Very powerful, very good throttle response. A couple times there I was trying to rev it on camera. I mean, as soon as you touch the trigger, this thing is nice. So that's one good thing about an M-Tronic and even better about the 500i with the fuel injection. These things have excellent throttle response. I'm used to old school carbs that uh, kind of lag for a second once you touch the trigger. Very happy with that. Love the saw overall. The only two takeaways that I'm not happy with is the Oler. No problem. Knock the pin down. Turn that up. And I do not like these dogs or bucking spikes. They're called so many different things. Still could have done a better job on that. Those are pitiful. Really need them on both sides and need a bigger set. Unless I was having perfectly cut wood that I could dig in, uh, these don't work very well. So I think I'm going to upgrade those. They make a much larger set. It needs that. Plus, I got a 25-inch bar, so I can afford to lose a little bit of bar with a bigger set. And uh, I may have some other goodies coming down the road, but I want to get the saw broken first. Aftermarket support seems really good for these. And I meant to mention that earlier. One other reason that I decided to choose this saw over a 500i I've seen the availability of parts online, which made me feel really good. From the little ignition coal, or it's not even really a computer, but the processor. I found those online for like 89 bucks. I was blown away. I seriously doubt you can buy a 500i computer for anything less than several hundred dollars, if you can even find it. Uh, there's solenoids on there. I mean, I even found a full carb wiring everything that was, uh, I think it was $89 as well. And then I seen some more for a little over 100 while that's more expensive than a traditional carb, that makes me feel good. I already seeing parts available. I don't expect this saw to wear out, but should I want to work on it myself, I really like that I've seen probably the main components that could potentially go bad, the electronic side of it, online for very reasonable prices. So I was really happy to see that. Um, that's another reason it made me feel more comfortable coming from a traditional carb saw up to this. Because I had been looking at a 461, but without a doubt, the biggest influence on a saw for me is weight this was the lightest middle class saw that i could find that sold me a 461 for example i think it's like two two and a half pounds heavier than this if i remember correctly don't want to be lugging that around all day not a big guy so i love this we'll take a quick look at what we bucked up and then i'm out of here i gotta beat some rain it's funny to see that that one piece that i was just gonna let rot and throw away oh my goodness it'll fill up probably one and a half or more racks over there. So that was some good wood that was gonna get tossed and it looks small out in the field, even though it's a huge piece of wood, don't get me wrong, but you wouldn't have thought that all this out here, how much it'd fill up, heck, it may fill up two racks. So that's a lot of good wood. Some of this stuff like this, that that's dry looking. It was real powdery, really hard on the saw. And then some of this over here uh, was really, this was kind of the center of the tree, really still damp, wet, even though that tree's been out there almost a year. This stuff will still have to continue to dry till next year. So I've got some really good solid wood here that I can bust up and uh, let season and sell. And then some of these crazy end pieces and cookies that come off of it, I'll cut it up for my own personal use and we'll throw it right in the fire pit. Well, all right, thank y'all so much for watching. As you can see, we got a lot of firewood and we're just getting started. I haven't even went and picked up more tree loads. Plus I've got my eye on a really big tree across the road over there that's been down for probably a year maybe two years now to think about it that's this big that we can really sink this saw into sadly yeah it's, it's been out a while it'll be hard dead wood i keep trying to ruin these chains but that'll be good season wood that could potentially start burning plus it should last easily till next year so i'm gonna go see if uh, the neighbor will let me get that one especially now that i got a saw that'll handle it it's been kind of waiting for a potential saw before i go knock on the door for that so here it is we have got a lot and i mean a lot of splitting to do we're going to let this front get through the rain pass and then uh we'll have a lot of splitting videos coming for you thank you so much for watching i know there was a lot of talking kind of really wanted to explain why i did the purchase and uh we'll have a lot more sawing videos coming up ask any questions you like that's what the comment section's for don't forget to like share subscribe thanks for watching